and I could have told the pastor no, but I just want to encourage everyone 
that we should always have a word in our heart That's that right. we can yeah. easily speak about Jesus. Amen. If you consider all that Jesus has done for us, our families, our loved ones, people we know, we always should have something positive to say about Jesus Amen. at any given time. So this morning I want to read Matthew 20, 17 through 19. And these are the words of Jesus. It says, Now Jesus, going up to Jerusalem, took the twelve disciples aside on the road and said to them, to them, Behold, we are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and to the scribes, and they will condemn him to death and deliver him to the Gentiles to mock and to scourge and to crucify, and the third day he will rise again. He knew before he ever was born on this earth that he would die for our sins. He also knew before that ever happened that on the third day he would rise again. And as his followers today, we know that that will happen again. He will return for us again. Amen. He's prepared a home for us. He has the gift of salvation for all of us. He's coming back. The one thing that we all have in common is that we have a job to do. Our job is to tell others he's coming back. We probably all know many people in our lives that we love that are not ready. They don't know Jesus. They don't know what grace feels like. They don't know salvation. Our job, our duty, our obligation, and our gift is to tell them he's coming back. He's coming back soon. We need to all be ready. Each of us in this building need to be ready. But we also have others that we need to let know that they also need to be ready. It's not about condemnation, it's about salvation. Jesus is coming back. We need to be ready. And we need to let everyone else know that he's coming back for them as well. Dear Jesus, thank you for the opportunity to come together in your house, to worship together, to praise you. As our praises go up to you, you surround us with your love and your glory and your grace. Help us each to have the strength to be able to tell those around us that you're coming back. Help us to be a testimony to those that need us the most, that need to be able to see you in our lives. Thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity today to worship together with everyone here. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand once again as we just worship the Lord? Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just love you, Lord Jesus. Oh 
Open up my eyes 
worship you, Lord Jesus. You are our all in all, Lord Jesus. Lord, you are worthy to be praised, Lord. You are worthy to be praised, Lord Jesus. We worship you.
Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. If you have a need this morning, whatever it may be, would you just lift your hands towards heaven in this place? Lord, you see every need. Lord, you see every, everything that every individual is going through right now. And Lord, you can meet them and you are meeting them right now, Lord Jesus. And I thank you for that. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that you are touching hearts and touching lives. I thank you, Lord Jesus, and even those, Lord God, Lord, raising their hands online, Lord, you know and you see, Lord Jesus. And so I just pray that you just meet them right where they're at. I pray for a joy and life to enter in to each and every individual. Lord, and that you just minister to each one like only you can do. Lord, I pray that they would hear your voice. I pray, Lord Jesus, Lord God, that they would hear you right now in Jesus' name. Touch them in the mighty name of Jesus. this morning. We just have a few announcements we want to make as uh, we're getting ready right before we go into our message this morning. Um, I First, I want to mention, I think I have a, there it is. Um, I want to mention where, oh good catch, Julie's catching everything this morning. Uh, I do want to mention, as we talked about last week, we did uh, some uh, raising of funds for the parking lot. And uh, looking at some of those that ha uh, the money that has come in and, the, and some of the money that is sponsored. And uh, we have uh, from those that gave online and then also that gave in church last week um, and including the sponsors, uh, $5,170 last week. So that leaves us about $5,000 off and uh, until we we're able to uh, put the parking lot in. We're very close. And I'm thankful to the Lord, each and every one that gave last week. My goodness gracious, I'm so thankful uh, for your giving and uh, giving towards that. And, uh, um, and so I do want to remind everybody, if you feel led of the Lord, if the Lord speaks to your heart, um, I'm not putting pressure on you. Uh, sometimes when we talk about giving, sometimes people, uh, well, pastor, you're putting pressure. No, I'm, I'm not doing that. You, you, have, you can do what you want to do. I'm not telling you have to do it. But if the Lord says something to your heart, then that's something different. That's something different. Um, and so uh, very close. So I just wanted to give everybody an update on that. There is um, a little uh, a paper and it has the, if you want the sponsor, um, when we do our giving, and uh, this morning we're going to do our giving um, in the box after service today. Uh, we have some people that are missing today, uh, and so we're going to do it that way this week. And so we have an offering box that is in the back, and you can give your tithes and your offering. Uh, but whatever you're giving it towards, make sure uh, that you, you put it uh, in an envelope and mark it uh, what it's for so that we know um, where to put that money. And as a church, so wherever you place something, that's where the money goes. It doesn't get used for anywhere else or anything else. It gets only used for what you designate that for. And so um, so that's why we want to make sure we, we write it down and designate that. Um, a couple of things coming up. Uh, the, the Women's Conference is coming up here not too long. Yes, April um, 20th through the 22nd, there is going to be a Women's Conference in um, Clackamas, Oregon. Um, it's a great um, fellowship time for ladies to get together, to have a good time with message, uh, message and, speak, um, and just to have women fellowship. And then we also are going to start in May for the ladies. We are going to do a three-part women's Bible study, and it's going to be on for Fridays, the 5th, the 12th, and the 19th at 6.30. Um, it's also going to be on faith, 
hope and love. And then the last Sunday, we will have our fellowship with a dinner on the last Sunday of that month. And I just want to mention that we just finished our James Bible study um, uh, this last week. And so this week, uh, we're not going to have a, a class, um, but uh, uh, be looking for it coming back up. And I believe we're going to be starting in the book of 1 Corinthians. And we'll be having a Bible study in the book of 1 Corinthians. So that will be coming up. It will be posted in your bulletin uh, on that. Uh, we do have a Good Friday service that is coming up this next week. I want to encourage everyone to come out to that. Um, and uh, it's a great opportunity. Uh, we're going to be having communion and having worship. And, uh, and that's going to be at 7 p.m. And also the kids are going to have an activity as well. Uh, they're going to have a, a Good Friday. And it's called an escape room. But with that, they learn about Jesus and uh, about Scripture and all those things that are, that are going on with that. So uh, that's going to be coming up this next Friday and the next Sunday, uh, Easter Sunday. Um, and so I just want to encourage everyone to come out to that. And then also uh, bring your family and friends. Um, we're going to have a great time in the Lord and celebrating the resurrection of our Lord and our Savior. Um, weekly, men's, uh, Mount Men's Weekly Prayer and Breakfast Coffee uh, starting at 9 a.m. here. Men are been meeting in the morning. It's, uh, been there. it's every week. They come and they pray and pray for one another. And then also they have a time uh, afterwards, uh, generally go and get some coffee or, or some breakfast uh, together. So it's just a good time of fellowship. Men's Saturday breakfast will be April uh, 15th at 9.30 a.m. here at the church. And so that will be coming up. And, uh, and if you're interested or know anybody who's interested in camp, we have all those, those applications, staff applications. We have um, what the camp is about, everything that's set up uh, back there. And uh, it, you're good? All right, we're good. <laughs> and, uh, and so uh, God is good, isn't he? Amen. So everyone kind of caught up? All right. Um, this morning we're as we're, we're celebrating uh, and we're looking at uh, we call this is Palm Sunday. If you didn't know, surprise! It's Palm Sunday this morning, and uh, this year we always uh, look at to our Savior and looking at Him for who He is as the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. There was a glimpse that the people during that time with Jesus they they got a glimpse of Jesus and his lordship and his kingship as he came into Jerusalem. And we focus on that and we talk about that. We're going to be talking about that this morning uh, because Jesus uh, is the way, the truth, and the life. And Jesus is the resurrection and the life. And Jesus is our Lord and Savior. And he went to the cross and he paid a price for our sin so that we could be set free and so that we could be resurrected and come to life in Jesus Christ. Isn't that wonderful this morning? That we can come alive in Jesus because Jesus is the resurrection and life. And so we're going to be talking about that this morning. And um, before we start, let's ask God's blessing. Dear Jesus, Lord, I need you this morning. I need your help and I need your leading. I pray, Lord God, that you would be honored in everything that is said and done. I pray, Lord Jesus, that we would grasp, Lord, who you are. And Lord Jesus, God, that you are more, Lord God, than many times of how we look at you or believe you to be. I pray that our faith would grow this morning. I pray for your peace. Lord, I pray for your strength. And I pray for your encouragement, Lord God, as we look to you, Lord, the author and the finisher of our faith. The one who came, the one who died, and the one who rose again. Lord, we love you and we thank you and we give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. And all God's people said, amen and amen. I was talking uh, to, my, I think, my parents this last week about our, our little Elijah and, and some of the things that he did when he was growing up, or he's still growing up, but uh, uh, he used to do many things. And one of the things that he did was he, when he was only not nine, ten months old, he was able to get out of his crib, and he'd jump out of his crib, and uh, uh, but before that, we were kind of happy because, you know, we could put him in there and then he'd eventually go to sleep. But there was uh, one day that we or one evening that we were there and um, and all of a sudden we hear this. And here he comes out the door and he comes down the hall with the biggest smile on his face. He was so excited and he was clapping for himself. Clapping, being a, uh, he thought he was, he did something good. He was so excited. We put him back in, and then a few moments later, we hear, 
again. And he'd come out again, and we're like, Lord Jesus, help us. Because <laughs> now we realize that we're not going to get any sleep. So we worked with him, and, uh, uh, but cheering for himself, he was happy for himself. Sometimes we see people um, that cheer for themselves or pat themselves on the back. Uh, but we have Jesus coming into the town, coming into the city, and he did not need to pat himself on the back. His repu reputation preceded him and spoke for itself. And uh, his glory could not be hidden, uh, and the people um, began to see his royalty. And Jesus says uh, in John eleven twenty five 25 through 26, he says that I am the resurrection and the life. And this is what I'm going to be talking about this morning. And we're going to be looking at, at Jesus here as he's coming into the city and the, those that laid things down. And we talk a little bit different about this story every year. Uh, but there's one thing I always bring up and I always show uh, because it's so powerful, I believe, in then showing uh, Jesus and who he is and the power and the authority and that he is the resurrection and that he is the life. And... Um, I want, to, I want to look at this, uh, th this picture, and I'll have Julie bring it up here in just a moment. Uh, but it really sets up the scene, and I show it every year. If you're tired of seeing it, I'm sorry, I'm not. I could look at it all the time and think about, wow, this is what was happening when Jesus was walking through and going down into Jerusalem. And this was where he was at because it tells us in Scripture where he was at. And, uh, uh, and although this message is different than it has been in times past, we are going to be focus on, focusing on that Jesus is, number one, he is the resurrection, and number two, he is the life. And here as Jesus uh, was coming down, it says, when he was drawing near the descent of Mount uh, Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen. And so you see the picture here. Uh, he would have been uh, at the top of this hill. And it tells us, right? We see it right in Scripture. It says, when he was drawing near to the descent of Mount Olives. And so this is where he's at. And he's beginning to come down the hill and coming into Jerusalem. It says, this is where they were gathering. Blessed is the king who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. Now, I share this again this morning because this shows the resurrection power of Jesus Christ and where he's at. Many, some, if you've been here for a while, you know the story and know what I'm going to say. Because as, they were, as he was coming down the hill and as we're looking at that picture, and Julie, go ahead and go to the other picture that we're looking at there, uh, that we have there, um, about, do you see the stones that are all around you know what these stones are? They are gravestones. And so when Jesus speaks, there is, he would have been passing by these gravestones on Mount Olive, uh, and, the, and the Jews uh, that, that, or the Pharisees that were there would say, silence your, uh, your disciples, silence these from praising you and worshiping you. You need to silence them. And Jesus says something that is very powerful and that can speak to our hearts this morning. He says, and he, he looks and he points, and he says, if they keep silent, something's going to happen. If they keep silent, he says, the rocks will begin to cry out. And what Jesus was saying, and this is what we're going to be talking about this morning, as Jesus is the resur resurrection and the life, and many that were there that were following Jesus were there because this not too long before, it says that they were there because they seen that Lazarus was raised from the dead. And as Jesus was walking by, as he, he said that, and the word that is there cry out, it is scream out that there would be some life that would be entering and some praises that would be coming forth from the ones of those that had passed in ancient times and throughout the history of Israel that were buried there in that place. He said that if these, are, if these stay quiet, there's going to be some pulling and there's going to be some, something happening within these graves because the resurrection and the life was going by. 
die at that very moment. Isn't that powerful this morning? Jesus says the dead know it. And basically saying that the dead could feel his resurrection power. Just prior to this moment, as he, he says to, with Lazarus, and in, the, in that moment, and this is the story we're going to be talking about as leading up to this moment. In Luke, it says that, um, that they did not realize because it was hidden from their eyes. And I want to pray for us this morning. Lord, do not hide, Lord, this from our eyes, I pray, Lord Jesus. But this is the main reason. In John 12, 17 through 18, it says, Therefore the people who were with him when he called Lazarus out of the tomb and raised him from the dead for witness, for this reason the people also met him because they heard that he had done this great sign. And so when Jesus was there and all these people were gathering around, one of the reasons why they were there was to worship this king or worship this one that could raise the dead back to life. And so there they were right here and they were hearing Jesus say this to the Pharisees. And he was speaking something that was powerful and something that was true. And many times and many of us many times miss it. But if you feel dead this morning... There is hope for you because Jesus can bring you back to life. It's not too late when Jesus, when God speaks, things come back to life. Just like Ezekiel with the dry bones and they were coming back together. When the word of God was spoken, life enters in. Breath of God enters in and life comes back. The word of God this morning brings life. And if you grab a hold to the message of the cross this morning, life will enter into you. Life will enter into your heart and in your soul, and you will be forever changed. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life in John eleven twenty five 25 through 26. And this is where we're going to be kind of, we're going to be starting this morning. 25, it says, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Do you believe this this morning? If you believe this this morning, you have eternal life with Christ. If you believe this this morning, you will never die. But the resurrection power of God will keep you. With me, growing up many times, we were late to a lot of things. But Jesus is never late. And Jesus is always right on time. This is part of the revelation of his deity. He can operate in and out of time and space, in and out of life and death. This is who he is. This is impossible. Yes, only God can do this type of stuff. And you're right, Jesus is one with God. And so as we look at this this morning, as we're looking at life and the resurrection power that is in Jesus Christ, we're going to, I'm just going to share. I'm going to read this story. And I'm going to be doing this a little bit different than I normally do with my regular points. But I'm going to be reading and I'm going to be going through. And if you want to turn to Matthew 1 through 16. So we're going back a little bit. But we'll come back at the end here and bring all of this together. Because in this, that there was something that was spoken when he raises Lazarus from the dead. And the people see who Jesus or gets the glimpse of who Jesus really is. It really speaks into the moment and the time when Jesus was entering into the city. And the reason why the, so many people gathered there and to worship Jesus and to praise him as he was coming into the city. And they, because of the miracles that he had done, but not, not just the miracles, but because they seen him. His resurrection power uh, that was in him and through him. And Jesus is going to reveal this to the people and the onlookers uh, there with Lazarus. And so I want to look at this, this scripture this morning. I want to look at this story because I want us to grab a hold, even going into this next week, of the God that we serve, that Jesus Christ who came who died and rose again, as we go into this next week, the death could not stop him. It could not hold him because Jesus is life and Jesus is the resurrection. 
Matthew 11, 1 through 16. And this is talking about Lazarus being raised from the dead. It says, Now a certain man was sick, Lazarus, of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was that Mary who anointed the Lord with fragrant oil and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore the sisters sent to him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom you love is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, The sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her, sis and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Now that is a per perplexing scripture because it says that Jesus loved them. Now like I said, I'm doing this a little different this morning. But it says, because Jesus loved them, it says that he stayed two more days in the place that he was. I want, you to, I want that to sink in just for a moment. For thinking about time and for waiting and the time that we live in and, and the things that we see that we put an urgency and we put a degree of urgency because of time and because we see that time is short, that we don't have all the time in the world, we give urgency to certain things. And when Life is about to end, and when things seem like there's no more hope, here we see that it says that Jesus loved them, but then it says, and it seems like there's a, a conflict here with between the two statements that are spoken, and he says he loved them, but then it says that he stayed two more days in the place that he was. Now, Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that he was sick, he stayed two more days in the place where he was. Then after he said to his disciples, let us go to Judea again. I want us to keep this in mind as we uh, we're understanding, as we'll see, because we know the story. We know what's going to happen next. But that Jesus is, number one, he is the resurrection. And number two, he is alive. Number one, the resurrection, meaning that Jesus brings what is dead back to life. All right? Grab a hold of that this morning. Because if you feel dead inside, if, if you feel that there's no hope or that things have come to an end and there's no future for you, that is not the end in Jesus Christ because Jesus brings what is dead back to life. Only Jesus can bring you from death to life. Number two, he is life. John 1, 3 says, all things were made through him and without him, nothing was made that was made. We see in Scripture, in him was life, and the life was the light of men. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. It says that Jesus loved them, but then he waited. He waited. The disciples said to him, Rabbi, lately the Jews sought to stone you, and you are going there again? Anybody ever been confused? <laughs> Anyone maybe not quite grasp or understand why God says what he says? Anyone try to, to think and, and try to understand? And when, when you are serving the God who sees all, that knows all, that has everything, uh, that he sees everything and knows everything, and he speaks to you, and sometimes that you, he speaks to us, or he speaks to us through his word, and there are some things we just don't grasp or we don't understand or can kind of sound confusing because we compare it in reference to our own understanding and our own thoughts of how things are. And when Jesus says this to the disciples, the disciples question him and they say, God, do you really, Jesus, do you really know what you're talking about? Here, Lazarus is dying and you want to go back to the place where they want to kill you. Jesus answered, are there not 12 hours in the day? If anyone walks in the day, he does not stumble. Because he sees the light 
of this world. But if one walks in the night, he stumbles because the light is not in him. These things he said, and after that he said to them, Our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him. Here Jesus, once again, he, he speaks to them. He says, okay, we're going to a place where they want to kill you. All right, we'll go in the daytime because maybe uh, because bad things happen at night. Jesus is speaking something here, and he's speaking something that is very important and something that is, uh, very, that is spiritual as well. But he's saying something to them, and they are not seeing or grasping. Now, I don't, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that section because that's a message all in itself right there in 9, uh, 9 through 11. But he speaks to them, and he talks to them, and he sh shares something with them. And he, then he goes and he tells them because he knows their concern. And he says, our friend Lazarus sleeps, but I go that I may wake him. Then his disciples said, Lord, if he sleeps, he will get well. This sounds like us, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, Jesus, whatever, <laughs> whatever you're saying, I don't know. However, Jesus spoke of his death. But they thought he was speaking about taking rest in sleep. Then Jesus said to them plainly, I need this. I asked God to speak to me plainly. And Jesus says he's dead. He's dead. Or as my daughter would say, he passed away. But he's dead, he says. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there, that you might believe. Now, going back again, when it says that Jesus loved them, that Jesus loved uh, Mary and Martha and Lazarus, and that then he waited two days. And then again, here Jesus speaks kind of in like, like manner when he's speaking to the disciples, when he says that, that Lazarus has died, but I'm glad that I haven't, I'm not there. Now, this... If you're listening to this, God, we would be in this position. I don't understand. What are you doing? Why aren't things happening the way that I think they should happen? Time is running short. And I don't know, God, if you know, but things are coming to an end. But in verse 14, again, it says, Jesus said to them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I'm glad for your sakes that I was not there that you may believe. Nevertheless, let us go to him. Then Thomas, who is called the twin, said to his fellow disciples, Let us also go, that we may die with him. They're not getting it. <laughs> we don't get it many times. And here, Thomas, one, the, of the, the twin, he, he goes and he says, um, all right, Jesus, I think I'm grasping what you're saying. We have a lot of people in the church. We have a lot of, a lot of disciples of Jesus that, that are, are many times are kind of like this because we're all trying to say the right thing and we're trying to say the spiritual thing and we're trying to say what's best. And here you have Thomas that's coming up in a similar manner that he's coming up and he's saying, okay, God, Jesus, I think I'm getting what you're putting out. And he says, all right, let us all go that we may all die with him. Jesus is saying, saying something more powerful. I'm not talking about dying. I'm talking about living. Jesus knew what he was going to do and that he was going to bring Lazarus back to life. The sickness isn't unto death, but for the glory of God is that the Son is glorified. In Isaiah 4, uh, 42, 8, it says God doesn't share his glory with anybody. This, for, for what is going on, is very tough and difficult for the disciples to be able to grasp and to understand what is going on here. And here, even as Thomas is saying um, that, okay, God or Jesus will go and will die with him. He's thinking that he's talking about this, this kind of death that is spiritual. or Jesus is saying something different than what he is able to understand. Because they don't see Jesus or have a true glimpse of who he really is and the power and authority that he has. But Jesus is about to show them. Aren't you glad that Jesus reveals himself to us? Here, as we go, as they, they speak, waiting 
sometimes in our life, no one likes to wait. And here we have Jesus that is purposely holding back. Let me say that again. Jesus is purposely, he has a purpose for waiting to come. We do not like to wait. And in the moments and in the times of waiting, I don't like waiting. And there have been times when, when there's been a long line for this or that. I'll, I'll, I'll weigh things out and I'll be like, okay, it's not worth the wait. So I'll go or I'll find somewhere else to go if it's for food or for something along those lines. I'll weigh things out. Many of us do not like to wait. And especially we don't like to wait when it's concerning things that, that we are concerned about. And we're, we're trying to understand and trying to grasp what is happening and going on around us. But the more we wait, the greater the revelation of the glory of God and Jesus in our lives. So if you are going through something right now and it seems like you're waiting and you've been waiting too long, I want to say to you that things are, have not come to an end, that God is not done yet, and that God is God, and God will reveal himself in the times of waiting. If he held or if he went right away, we would have seen something different. If Jesus would have went and just went and healed Lazarus, they would have seen Jesus and this glorious and mighty miracle, right? This would have been, this would have been good. They would have only known Jesus, though, as the healer. But I want to say that Jesus is more than just the healer. That Jesus is the resurrection and Jesus is the life. They would only know Jesus as healer, not as a resurrection in life. He said he sleeps. And they're saying, well, if he's sleeping, he's going to be fine. I mean, we even know, right? If he's sleeping, the doctors say to get some rest, right? You need to get some rest. It's the best thing for you. But Jesus says, no, he's dead. I'm trying to tell you something. And it went over their heads. And many times it goes over our heads. In the time of waiting and in the time of not understanding, it goes over his head. And then Jesus says, I'm glad that you were, that I wasn't there so that you would understand that I am more than who you think I am. I am more than who you understand that I am. I am more than what you think. Thomas with the gloom and the doom, it's all over. Thomas misses it and tries to say something spiritual. Let us go that we may die with him. But Jesus is saying, I'm not talking about dying. I'm talking about living. And I want to say that to you this morning, that Jesus is not about death, but Jesus is about life. I'm talking about I am more. Jesus is saying, I'm more than who you think that I am. I am beyond death and time and space, and I live outside of of your boundaries. When Jesus talked about dying to self, he's not talking about dying, but he's truly talking about living and living outside the limitations of this life. Jesus is a resurrection and life. In verse 17, it says, When Jesus came, he found that he had already been in the tomb four days. Now, Bethany was near Jerusalem, about two miles away. There's a point that is, that is given right there, okay? How far away was Jesus when Lazarus died and where he was buried? Only two miles. Here, he's only two miles away. Now, if it wasn't getting them that he said, well, I'm not going there right now, but I'm going to come back at later time. And when time was short, not only was time short, it was only two miles away. It was here to loves. A little before loves. Two miles away. And many of the Jews had joined the women, uh, women around Martha and Mary to comfort them concerning their brother. Now Martha, as soon as she heard that Jesus was coming, went and met him. But Mary was sitting in the house. Now Martha said to Jesus, Lord, 
if you would have been here. If you would have been here, my brother would not have died. But even now, I know whatever you ask of God, God will give it to you. Sounds pretty good, doesn't it? If you would have been here, he wouldn't have died. And then Martha says something that, that it, it speaks faith. It speaks that God can do all things and, and that God is able and he's more than able. Because she said in verse 22, it says, but even now I know whatever you ask of God, he will give it to you. So she's saying, all right, my brother's dead, but I know if you ask God, he will give it to you. Whatever you ask him. And then Jesus says, okay. Jesus said to her, your brother will live again. Your brother will live again. But then something happens. There's something with her faith, and there's something with, with her, her perspective and how she looked and even how she perceived Jesus, that Jesus is able and that God listens to Jesus, to whatever he says. And then when Jesus says that your brother's going to live again, it was still beyond her comprehension and understanding that he was going, that Jesus, if he asked God that, Lazarus would come back to life. In their minds, death was the end. But Jesus was about to show them something amazing and powerful. That Jesus is more than just a healer. But that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. And then Martha said to him, I know that he will rise again in the resurrection at the last day. The hope, the knowing what Jesus was trying to communicate with her. And then Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and I am the life. He who believes in me, though he may die, he shall live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. He said, do you believe this? Do you believe this? Do you believe this this morning? Jesus was only two miles away. Martha says, you are too late. Jesus, your brother, he says he's going to rise again. And she says, I know, I know in the resurrection he will rise again. And then Jesus says, I am the resurrection and I am the life. And Jesus, in, in Martha's mind, the time for something had already passed and it was already too late. Even when Jesus spoke to her something that was greater and beyond her comprehension. And here Martha is not grabbing a hold but Jesus waited so that they would know. And I want to say, in your waiting, Jesus will reveal his glory in your time of waiting. There are three kinds of people. Those who are right now, anything else is too late. Those who wait until the last minute, we see, and those who never get anything done. Everyone thought it was too late. And that all hope was lost, that death means the end, there's no changing that, their minds were not able to go there, but Jesus is about to change all of that in the, this moment, and that through death was not the end, but just the beginning. And I, I want to tell you this morning, if you, that you are not too far gone, if you fail dead, and that there's no hope, Jesus can bring you back to life. 32. Then when Mary came to Jesus, or Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she fell down at his feet saying to him, Lord, if you would have been here, my brother would not have died. We had Martha telling him that. We had Mary telling him that. We had the disciples questioning Jesus. But they're about to find out that Jesus is more than who they think he is. It says, therefore, when Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her weeping, he groaned in the spirit and was troubled. And he said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. And then it says in the smallest scripture that, that in, in the Bible, it says, Jesus wept. Then the Jews said, see how he loved him. 
And some of them said, could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Jesus was getting it from every side. Hear all the miracles. And so they knew that Jesus could do miracles. They knew that Jesus could heal. And now Jesus waiting. He has everybody around him questioning him because, because they didn't do what, he, what they expected him to do. They expected him to do something that was different than how he did it and how he was going to do it. And he purposely waited, and he allowed these to question him. They, he allowed them to speak to him. And all the while, Jesus felt where they were at. And some of them said, Could not this man who opened the eyes of the blind also have kept this man from dying? Lazarus is going to be raised. In verse 38, it says, Jesus, again groaning in himself, came to the tomb. It was a cave, and a stone lay against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. All right, wow, that's pretty powerful. I mean, if in a movie, this is pretty, uh, the, the, uh, the build-up to this, and here we have Jesus coming, and he's saying, roll away the stone. And then all of a sudden, you have Martha, the sister of him who was dead, said to him, Lord, by this time, there's a stench, which is a nice way to say it. It was very, it's going to be stinky. <laughs> For he has been dead four days. He has been dead four days, and here he comes, and, and, he, and I, you can just feel the tension and all of those, and, and Jesus is groaning in, his, groaning in his spirit, and I really believe he's groaning in his spirit because they are not grasping, they are not grabbing a hold of who Jesus really is, but Jesus is about to show them something, something very powerful, that he's more than just a healer, but he is a resurrection, and he is the life. Sometimes we think we know more than God. How do I know this? Because when God tells us something, we ask him, God, is that really what you're trying to tell me? She was like, Jesus, you don't know. She questions Jesus. As if Jesus didn't know how long, because they've already mentioned it, how long that he had been in there and how long he had been dead. Now this just sets us up all the more. And that sometimes we get stuck on, on, on the part of where, well, this is going to, because of the stink and because of how long he was in there for four days. But this is something that is even greater miracle that is speaking of the resurrection power of Jesus because the body had already begun to decay. The body had already begun to fade. It was gone, was beginning to decay. And here, this dot, the speaking of this was and the, the, about the resurrection power power of Jesus Christ that Jesus can bring back to life as in the very beginning and restoring the ligaments, restoring the muscles and bringing life back into the body. Isn't this amazing this morning? Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus said to him, did I not say to you in verse 40, if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? He said, did I not tell you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? I want to say that to you this morning. Did not Jesus tell you if you would believe that you would see the glory of God? And maybe somebody needs to grab a hold of that this morning. But when Jesus is speaking and Jesus is speaking to us today, did did I not tell you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God? Then they took away the stone from the place where he was dead and was lying. And Jesus lifted up his eyes and he said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. And I know that you always hear me. But because of the people who are standing by, I said this, that they may believe that you sent me. Here Jesus says a prayer, not for himself, not because he, he, didn't, he said it for the people that were looking on and the ones that were listening. He says, Lord, I know that you always hear me. Lord, I, all, I know that, that uh, Father, that you have already heard me, but because of these that are all looking right now and that they're listening to me and standing by, I am praying this prayer that they 
believe that you have sent me. In verse 43, it said, Now when he had said these things, he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And he who had been dead came out bound hand and foot with great clothes, and his face was wrapped with a cloth. Jesus said to them, loose him and let him go. And I want to say it once again, a point from this part right here, that there that we have, we need to get off the grave clothes and the things that bind us because Jesus has brought us from death unto life. And if you are living a life like you have been, like you used to be living in a life that is in the dumps, a life that doesn't have the joy of the Lord, it is time to have the grave clothes removed and to step into life because Jesus says, loose him and let him go. The sound of the voice of the creator rings through the natural to the spiritual, calling back the soul uh, back to life right where he was at. And it was not just the soul that became, came back into him. We see the resurrection power of Jesus, and we see the life of Jesus, but we also see the healing power of Jesus in restoring the body back to its original function. Jesus brings us back to life. Lazarus couldn't, be, couldn't stay there. He was being summoned by the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He, and, and death had no power over the words of the resurrection and the life who is Jesus Christ. Now I want to go back and tie all this back together where, where Jesus was at the top of the hill. Heading into Jerusalem, where we see the gravestones that are there, that we see, and Jesus mentions and says, If these don't worship me, these Stones, there would be a cry that would come forth that would praise me. There would be a cry that comes. So the resurrection power of Jesus Christ being seen from the time of when, when Jesus raises Lazarus from the dead, that Jesus is walking in the res he, that Jesus is a resurrection and the life. That when Jesus is walking into Jerusalem, we get another picture that Jesus is a resurrection and the life. And we see as he is going and going through this week that when Jesus is taken to the cross that Jesus is the resurrection and the life that death cannot hold him death could not keep him down but he is life and he is the resurrection and the souls who were had gone on before that they when Jesus says that these would cry out there's a suggestion that there would be a, a mass resurrection from the dead because Jesus is a resurrection and he is the life. If you are dead, if you feel dead, or if even if you're in a time where you just feel like you're waiting and you don't understand why God is, why God it seems like he is, that he has held back and that he hasn't responded according to your timing and according to your will and you have a hard time grasping a hold of what is going on, I want to tell you this morning that Jesus is the resurrection and the life. That Jesus maybe wants to show you who he really is and that his glory would be revealed in your waiting this morning, Jesus raised him from the dead. He came back to life. And next week we'll be talking about our living hope that is found in Jesus. That our hope is alive. And our hope is not dead. Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Would you bow your heads with me? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Lord, I ask and I pray right now, Lord, Lord, that you, Lord Jesus, would be recognized, that you would be seen, that you would be glorified here in this moment and in this time, Lord Jesus, as we are here together and gathered in your name, Lord Jesus. Lord, we know that you are all around us. Lord, we know that you are here with us right now. And Lord, I pray this morning that we would get a glimpse of your glory and Lord, a, a, Lord that we would see you as a king of of kings and the Lord of lords, Lord, the resurrection and the life, Lord God, all power, all authority, Lord, being found in, in you and who you are, Lord Jesus, no matter what is happening, 
no matter what is going on. Lord, in the midst of not understanding, in the midst of hurting, in the midst of anguish, in the midst of all of these things, I pray, Lord, that Lord Jesus, Lord, through your word, that we would see you, Lord, how, Lord God, you revealed yourself, Lord Jesus, to the disciples, to Mary, to Martha, and to Lazarus. In this story this morning, I don't know who you might be. Maybe you can relate with the disciples and following Jesus and not understanding reasons and what's happening and going on around you. Maybe you, you can relate this morning with Martha and Mary in the difficulty of losing a loved one. In the hurt and in, in the pain and, and in not understanding why things happen the way they do. Maybe you relate with Lazarus. Someone who was dead, buried in the grave, felt like there's no hope and that all things had come to an end. And you need the Jesus that brings you back to life. You need the Jesus to reveal himself in the time of hurting and not understanding. I don't know what Lazarus said when, when Jesus' voice rang in into the spiritual, into the realm of death. But when the voice of life rang through this place of, un, of the unknown to us, calling him back to life, Lazarus said, I can't stay here. I'm being summoned by the king to stand in his presence. Death, I'm out of here. And life, here I come. If that is any of those that I mentioned, if that's you this morning, if you're here, and even if it's you online this morning, And you've been looking at Jesus as a limited Savior. And you're ready to see the glory of God in your life and in your heart. And see Him as a resurrection and the life. I want to say that the altars are always open. But before you even move right now, if this message has spoke to you, and you, and you just, you need the touch of the Father, and you want to move beyond where you are, I want to say that God can meet you right where you're at. Right where you're at this morning. And if that's you, would you just lift your hand towards heaven? All right, all right, all right, all right. Hands all over this place. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would meet, Lord, each one right now with your Holy Spirit, and with your presence right now in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I pray that you would meet, Lord, each one right where they are. Lord, I don't know, Lord, what area, God, that you're working on them in right now, but Lord, I know that you do. And so, Lord Jesus, I pray. Lord, as hearts and lives surrender to you, I pray, Lord God, that you, Lord Jesus, your life would enter into them. Lord, that uh, Lord, that your peace and your joy, Lord, would enter into them right now in Jesus' mighty name. I pray, Lord God, Lord, that they would believe, Lord, on you. Lord, I pray, Lord Jesus, Lord, that they would believe. As Jesus said, did I not say to you that if you would believe, you would see the glory of God. 
I pray for the revealing of your glory to each and every heart and each and every life that is here. Lord, as we believe and we place our trust in you, in Jesus' mighty name, right here, right now, in the name of Jesus. Right here and right now, in the name of Jesus. We just surrender to you. Would you just give him praise right now? Would you just begin to give him praise right now? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We just love you. We worship you. We give you all the praise and we give you all the glory. In Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, we love you, God. And we thank you for who you are. Lord, I pray. Lord, when we leave this place, I pray that you would go with us. I pray that you would lead us. And I pray that you guide us. I pray for your peace that passes all understanding.